<laughs> it, was, it was stripper music. Yeah, it literally was. It was stripper music. <laughs> it's my siren song. <laughs> you have no choice. It's like, oh, well, okay. Here we go. <laughs> I'm just going to wait until Rex is accepting some big award in an industry at some point. He's standing up front. He's giving a speech, and then from the side, I'm just going to go, I can't and stop like, it! No! No! Cut it out, damn it! <laughs> Alright, so this is Jim Beam Rye. Jim Beam. Oh, alright. So, the redheaded stepchild of the Jim Beam line. I don't know. <laughs> I, we really should market it that way. That'd be hilarious. Oh, oh, speaking of, I forgot. The bastard child of the Jim Beam line. <laughs> He's like, oh, the f Everyone right. knows he's part of the family, but he's not in the will. <laughs> <laughs> so this is straight whiskey. They say that they're doing it, again, pre-prohibition style. pro prohibition. Pro 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 Video three. <laughs> yeah, that's not... Video three. That's just pre -pro Try to say pre-prohibition. Pre-prohibition. Uh, do it a couple times in a row. Pre-ho... <laughs> <laughs> that fell apart. Didn't even get through the pre. Okay, so here's... This is still Martin, the patron saint of Budget Week. <laughs> Martin, you patron saint of whiskey. That's right. Oh. 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 So, <laughs> well, that's short thrift. <laughs> uh, I'm going to keep using that now. Um, you know what? I think that was your nickname in high school. Yeah, short, short thrift. thrift. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Short Thrift Whittington. Uh, that was pre-Hobbit days. Yeah, that the, the Jim Beam line of making whiskey goes back seven generations. Seven generations. Seven generations of whiskey makers. So that's a lot of pressure to have another generation. <laughs> yeah. You're like, all right, kids, what don't if, f it up. <laughs> what if you don't want kids? <laughs> yeah. And you don't even want to get married, really. Yeah. You just want to swim through your money and live the high life and all that Jim Beam riches. It's like, no, no, you must marry and procreate. Yeah, well now it's owned by Suntory, which is now Beam Suntory. Okay. So, they are part owners now? The Jim Beam family? Because uh, Suntory hadn't been doing it for just I don't know if they have, in, I don't know. And they're still distilling all the And the correction sign. <laughs> That's not correction. Zero. I just said I don't know. You must know everything. No. No, a correction can't be, I didn't know something. Omniscient is the standard. A needs to be that I stated Omniscient. something that turned out to not be true. <laughs> All so, right. Sorry. No, God, you so, want a childhood we, story? We're so regressing. It, well, it does not smell like a classic rye. It does not. It I'm smells not getting, like a rye-heavy bourbon. It does. Yes, I'm not getting the, the typical rye spice. Yeah. The anise black licorice notes. No, none of that. I mean, you can tell it's there's rye in there. It's a rye heavy bourbon, but it smells like a rye heavy bourbon. Okay. Oh, right, hey. Oh, oh. It's genuine. Genuine. I really love their labeling, though. Oh, a lot of people do. They're suing uh, distilleries left and right for even having similar shaped bottles. Uh, I thought that was Jack Daniels that was doing that. Is it Jack Daniels? Because the font, old school font and everything. Where's it's the Jack Daniels? Over there somewhere. All right, well, it's, it's too far. We can't. Never mind. <laughs> somewhere. Where's my correction sign? Over there. I need a correction sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of invisible. No, no, no. I'm on. not even getting the rye In bite. Invisible isn't the word. No, as a rye. As a rye. As a rye. Yes. I'm looking for that spicy, sweet nutmeg and clove and black pepper. I'm getting almost none of that. Yeah. If you poured me this, I don't think I would say rye. Yeah, me either. So maybe this is a gateway into rye. A gateway into rye. Maybe if you're not a huge fan of rye, but you like bourbon, this is your middle ground. Particularly if you, if you like uh, Jim Beam. Yeah, you have to like bourbon. Uh, J. Liang 122, here's a whiskey nerd question. Sorry, Rex. <sighs> Sorry, Rex. Do you have any guidelines with respect to blending whiskey? So many people want us to blend whiskey. We're blending whiskeys. We'll do the blending whiskeys. I will tell you my own personal guidelines. I can't find the beam. I know it's in here somewhere. Are there certain flavors that stand out more than others? Will peat overwhelm other flavors? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay, so here's all I'll tell you. Well, uh, well uh, what about stronger whiskeys like cast strength whiskeys yes. mixing with, mixing with um, lower proof whiskeys? No, Last. it's not quite the same thing. Yeah. Think of it the same way you think of cooking. Anything that has really dramatic uh, direction 
is going to stand out in a mix where things tend to be more mid-rangey and, right? So uh, know that spiky notes tend to stand out more than warm, round notes. Uh, just the way that if you were making uh, any kind of food, anything with butter, just a little bit of pepper is going to add the spiky notes you need, whereas a ton of pepper is going to destroy it. So whiskey is no different. It's just fundamental flavor combination profiling. If you're good at it with cooking, there's a good chance you'll be good at it with whiskey once you get your legs, sea legs. I don't know that you have Jim Beam. No, I do. I just don't know where it is because we used it in one of our uh, whiskey tastings at the class. Okay, so uh, again, we can't dip. This is, we've given a week, Daniel. We've given a week to the bottom shelf. Mm -hmm. And we can't go into this week, like the middle of the damn week. We can't go into the week thinking, well, it's bottom shelf. We don't have to give it uh, no, full, no. full thrift. We'll just give it short thrift. <laughs> That's a new <laughs> word of the week. Yeah, I'm still getting the spicy notes, but right. again, it's a spicy bourbon. So if we were being generous, we would say classic high rye bourbon. Yeah. As a rye, uh, man, if you're in love with those quintessential rye notes, the spice, um, the anise, you're not going to find it in this Jim Beam. Uh, you are going to find uh, a little bit of caramel sweetness. It's going to feel somewhat, um, somewhat thin as a budget. A little, little bit brittle. The oak note is definitely there, but it, again, even that note isn't really rich. It's uh, just kind of there, hanging out in the corner, not doing anything special or unique. Here's another high rate bourbon. Mm -hmm. Just wait, no, not another. A high rate, another, is, well, because I was looking for a different one. This is a high Here's a high rate bourbon. See how close they are? Yeah. Yeah. Just get the, Even in the smell. I just get a tiny, uh, tiny bit more softness and vanilla in the bourbon than I do in this yeah. rye. Yeah, but just a little bit. So, and, and it's, uh, you're not bad. It's not off putting. I actually, I dig that. It's not bad, it's not off putting. It's just confusing but, that we keep seeing a rye, rye on the label. But I don't like rye normally. It's no. not my thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This. I actually really enjoy. Oh, we got, I just read the first half of the first sentence here and the Nick Dondarrion question says serious question. No. Oh. And then, let's be serious. In parentheses, and not meant to ruffle any feathers. Oh, what, what? Ooh, ooh. Are you guys starting to get a little bored with the vault reviews? <laughs> of all the weeks to ask that question. Considering, <laughs> considering everything else you have going on. I hope not. I love your reviews and think everyone else does too. The other stuff is fun too, but I primarily tune in for the reviews. Keep it up. Bored? No. Stretched thin? Yeah. Yes. I would say exactly the same thing. Not bored. This is actually, once we step in here, right. and I know no one can bother me for the next hour, I actually feel kind of nice. Yeah, it's fun. Because it's like, oh, this is really enjoyable. <laughs> but but when we're not shooting, right. the knowledge that we have to shoot right. is one more thing that's just riding me thin. Yeah, no, it's it's not it's not uh, it's it's stretched in, particularly in the construction process of the distillery, yeah. which is gonna way way too long, way longer than anybody ever expected. Once that's open and running, and we aren't having to mess with it every single day, yes, and uh, then things will be a bit different. So I didn't give you a pat on the back because. Screw you. But the fact that we haven't missed an episode throughout all these months of construction, mm -hmm. I'll pat me on the back. <laughs> <laughs> you were there too, I guess. Okay. Yeah, here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. <laughs> you fight me, fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.